take a look at this probability tree. When the weather in Wellington's fine, Will makes it to class on time 75% of the time, and he's only late 25% of the time. If the Wellington climate works against him though, things take a turn for the worse. When it rains, he'll make it on time only 60% of the time, which means he's late 40% of the time. The last thing to add is that, overall, it rains 50% of the time in Wellington. There's a special kind of probability which is called conditional probability. Questions that are about conditional probability will pretty much always begin with given that, and so they're easy to spot. The idea behind conditional probability is that we want to know the probability of something given that something else happens. The probability of B given A equals the probability of A and B divided by the probability of A. Here's an example. Given that it rains, what is the probability that Will is late? So we begin by asking, what is the probability that it both rains and that Will is late? We can quickly calculate that this is 0.2. But the question's not over yet. We still need to do something with the condition. The condition here is given that it rains, which means that we need to take our probability 0.2 and divide it by the probability that it rains, which is 0.5. So we get the probability that Will's late given that it rains equals 0.2 divided by 0.5 equals 0.4. This next problem seems just like the last one, but it requires a modicum more thought. Given that Will is late, what is the probability that it rained? This question is different to the last one in that now the condition comes from the second part of the tree, not the first. We begin by looking at the chance of both these things happening, it raining and Will being late, which is 0.2. Next, we need to divide this number by the probability that the condition happened. Remember, the condition this time around is that Will is late. To find the probability of Will being late, we use these two paths. The total probability here is 0.325. Therefore, we divide the original probability by this new one to get our final answer. The probability that it rains given Will is late equals 0.2 divided by 0.325 equals 0.62. What is this number telling us? Well, we can say that if Will was in fact late, then there's a pretty good chance that the weather that morning was nasty, which is what we'd be expecting to see anyway. If we also get given another piece of information, for example, if we know how many days each month Will has lectures, and we know the probability that he's late to a lecture, we can figure out exactly how many days he'll be late to. When we use a probability in this way, it's called an expected value. What we're doing is figuring out how many days we'd expect Will to be late on. Let's say that he's already got 18 morning lectures each month, and we've already figured out that he has a 0.325 chance of being late to a random lecture. So the expected value works like this. Number of times late per month equals 0.375 times 18 lectures equals 5.85 lectures. So we'd expect to see Will run in sweaty and bedraggled about six times each month. The risk of something happening is pretty much identical to the probability of that thing happening. Let's take a look at a table that tells you about the risk getting breathing problems if you smoke, compared to if you don't. There's two kinds of risk. Absolute risk, which is where we just find the proportion slash probability of something happening, and then relative risk, which is where we compare the risk of one thing to the risk of another. An absolute risk problem for this might be, what is the risk of getting breathing problems if you smoke? All we need to do is take the number of people who have breathing problems and smoke, 
and divide this by the total number of people who smoke. Risk equals 36 divided by 55 equals 0.65. Now let's look at the relative risk. What is the relative risk of having breathing problems if you smoke compared with if you don't? The equation we're going to be using to figure out this relative risk is this. Relative risk equals risk of breathing problems for smokers divided by risk of breathing problems for non-smokers. Things are especially easy because we already know that the risk of getting breathing problems if you're a smoker is about 0.65. Next, we'll quickly calculate the risk of getting breathing problems if you do not smoke. The risk equals 7 divided by 145 equals 0.05. Now we can go and determine the relative risk. The relative risk is going to be 0.65 divided by 0.05 equals 13.6. This means you're almost 13 and a half times more likely to run into breathing difficulties if you smoke. Remember, in probability trees, we multiply down the branches and add probabilities from different branches together. We can use known probabilities to calculate the expected values of specific situations. We can compare absolute risks to find the relative risk of something. 